Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your boy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. Wow, wow, wow. Kwame Brown. Former NBA player Kwame Brown. Man. <laughs> what a couple of what a couple of days here. Now, for you who don't know, uh Kwame Brown was uh an outstanding, an outstanding uh basketball star uh while in high school. And he uh did not attend college. Uh I guess he was scheduled to go to the University of Florida. But he didn't attend college because of a hand in injury he sustained uh, in a fight. So he didn't attend college, went straight to the NBA. Made history, was the first overall number one pick out of high school. Uh, so made history, you can never take that away. You know, I even think I think you go to the Hall of Fame for that man. That uh, making that that uh, <clears throat> make, making that uh, history mark. I believe you go into the Hall of Fame, and at least uh, yeah, Naismith. Yeah, you go into Naismith Hall of Fame for that. So uh, man, quite a feat. Now his career didn't pan out how he expected, or the pundits or critics. Uh, the basketball world expected for his career to turn out. You know, a lot of expectation is placed on the number one pick, uh, especially when that number one pick goes to a high school student. And you got very high expectations. It didn't pan out that way. He suffered many, many injuries throughout his career. Uh, but to his credit, he lasted 12 years in the NBA. You know, it's a, it's a lot of brothers that can't say that. Uh, a lot of these brothers end up overseas, or going back and forth from overseas to back to the States. He did 12 consecutive years in the NBA. So uh, that's to be uh, applauded. Uh, but as he stated, when he was healthy, the years he was healthy, and this could be substantiated, his numbers were good and solid, man. He was a very productive player when healthy, but he just had injuries. Uh, and on one hand, those injuries just never uh, got him back to where he wanted to be. And uh, yeah, he had an ankle injury, had another hand injury. So he, he just he had uh, injuries throughout his career. And so it didn't pan out how he wanted it to. But uh, like he said, <clears throat> he was able to buy his mom a house on the golf course. Uh, with, with some of that money. And, uh, you know, I, I would assume, you know, from the video where he's living in all that land, you know, he did pretty well for, for himself. Now, <clears throat> why am I mentioning Kwame Brown? The other day, Matt Bournes and uh, Steven Jackson had uh, Gilbert Arenas on their show all the smoke produced by Showtime. <clears throat> now, they were making some slight, at one point they made some slight references and uh, some subtle jabs at uh, Kwame about his career. And that rubbed Kwame the wrong way. You know, uh, Gilbert Arenas used to be his teammate in Washington. He played the passive aggressive role, but you know, Kwame saw through it. Jack and and uh Jack and Barnes, Matt Barnes, you know, they, they had their little digs, you know, uh, very disrespectful. But before that, on another show, uh, another one of the episodes, they had uh Jamie Butts, the executive CEO of the Lakers, uh, on their show. And Kwame had spent some time with the Lakers. And she was talking about that trade that involved Kwame and brought over uh, Pal Casal. And uh, she had referenced that it was a trade for two players. And Jack took a jab and said, no, it was only for one player. 
basically saying that, you know, uh, Kwame wasn't a player, right? All right, disrespectful. Now, you know, this is what I believe. Uh, I made a video, I made a video uh, not too long ago, always give a man an out. But I probably need to make a video about bullying. Uh, yeah, man. You know, this was uh, this was on call for these jabs. They're sending that Kwame. And, and I believe you shouldn't say anything about a man that you won't say to his face. And I don't believe uh, Jack Gilbert Arenas or Matt Borns will say those disrespectful things to Kwame's face. Now, not because I believe they're scared of them. No, no, man, we're, we're all grown men. I don't believe they're scared of them. But the fact of the matter is, man, when you're grown, you really don't want no smoke. Man, I don't want no smoke. I know this show called is called, you know, All the Smoke, but I really don't want no smoke as a grown man. Now, that leads me into saying, I don't think Steven Jackson or Matt Bourne's are fully grown men, you know? podcast is named all the smoke but aside from that they're always threatening somebody threatening to fight somebody if you disagree if you're conservative if you're republican they're threatening to fight especially matt borns that's not grown man behavior you know that's a that's an inner child that's struggling to deal with some things that you didn't deal with in your childhood it's still in you that you had to face you need to do some shadow work and uh you know, both of these guys are very immature, man. Very immature. Uh, Gilbert Arenas is very immature. And, you know, Kwame Brown has been a punching bag for for uh, pundits, NBA pundits, commentators for years, especially Stephen A. Smith. And so, uh, and even a slight jab uh, by the guy who, who drafted him, Michael Jordan. Now, to Kwame's credit, he was a smart, smart young man because as he stated in his response video, who wants to hear him going against Michael Jordan? He said, man, before I even finished the sentence, people would have said, I'm making excuses, right? And he knew he couldn't win the back and forth with the media, so he kept quiet. Now, the, the, the pressure point was when people of his fraternity, former basketball players, get on a podcast throwing jabs. Like, come on, we're in the same fraternity. I was teammates with a couple of you guys. He was teammates with Jack, with Steven Jackson. Uh, I believe uh, with Charlotte Bobcats. He was teammates with uh, Gilbert Arenas, with the Washington Wizards. Come on, and you throwing jabs? You know, so he responded. And man, he laid it into all these cats, man. He laid it into all these cats. And what I like about it, he wasn't ranting. He wasn't yelling. He was calm. He was articulate. And actually, I was sitting there listening to him. I was like, man, Steven Jackson and Matt Bourne has got a podcast. Why does this guy have a podcast? He was well-educated, knew what he was talking about, knew how to speak uh, statistically about what was going on at the time he played, knew who, who at the time got drafted. His memory, his reflection was on point, was smooth, didn't stutter, didn't hesitate. He knew exactly what he wanted to say and where he was going. I was like, man, this brother needs his own show. And it was, he was funny. I don't know if he was trying to be funny or maybe he was, right? <laughs> but at some points. But I was like, man, this I, I never knew uh, the this, this side of him. And I was trying to think back. I was like, man, have I ever heard Kwame speak when he was in the league? And I can't recall. But it was refreshing, man, because uh, he spoke to this. I personally, and I voiced this before, got an issue with these brothers, 
particularly like Jack, uh, Steven Jackson and other brothers, always hollering, Black Lives Matter, right? But go so hard against other black men. Don't go hard against white men or non-black men. And proudly, proudly push the gang culture. Steven Jackson proudly pushes the gang culture. And I believe Matt Barnes is, is, is gang related or gang associated also. Uh, but he proudly pushes violence, you know, but he called these dudes out for, for what they have exhibited. They have exhibited some energy and he called them out on it, man. He called out, he called Gilbert Arenas out on it. Now, Jack, Hey, to his credit, he came out and said how, you know, he, he was played by this girl, had it all the way to the altar, crying over it, all the way to the altar. Uh, you know, um, we know Matt Bourne's history. Uh, I believe those sisters are Gavon. What's ironic is Matt Bourne was married to one sister. Gilbert Arenas was married to the other sister. And these, these two ladies was on um, a reality show too, I can't remember, Basketball Wives. They were both on that show. And uh, yeah, they were both married to, the, to, to these uh, women. But he called these guys out for their simp, simp actions and their uh, feminine ways. And it was just refreshing to see a man stand his ground calmly, not emotionally, uh, stated facts, had intellect, you know, and I started thinking, I was like, man, where has Cormac been? And so I started doing some research, went to his YouTube page and started looking at some old videos uh, as far as back seven months, 11 months, and started listening to him. And I was like, oh man, this brother, been on, he's been on this type of energy. So this, this brother is a conservative. Uh, he's not with the Black Lives Matter movement. And, uh, He's about masculinity. He's about old school masculinity, not playing the victim, not making excuses, going out and getting it to the best of your ability. Not saying some white man is stopping you from excelling, going out and getting it, no excuses. I say, man, this is why I vibe with this brother. This is my type of brother, you know, and the video is long. I, I'm gonna have it in the description. Y'all go check it out. It's long, it's over an hour. Uh, but he also made reference to his childhood. You know, he had eight siblings, single mother. Uh, well, his father went to uh, the penitentiary for life. Uh, so his mother was left to raise, raised him and uh, his, his uh, eight brothers. And uh, they all so dope, except him. And all the brothers went to jail. And, uh, you know, there's times he said he didn't have shoes to wear. You know, he didn't have shoes to wear. He referenced a, 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 a situation where, you know, he, he better got his shoes. He said, you know, if I beat you, those are my shoes, he beat them. So he showed up to the court with no shoes and left with shoes. He also said, he told his mom at five years old, I'm going to buy you a house. And at 17 years old, his brother got drafted in the NBA, bought his, his mom a house on the golf course. You got to respect that brother. And like you said, man, you, you guys have been bashing uh, me for years about a game, about a game I lasted 12 years in and made good money, made me a millionaire, right? He said, but I can call you guys out on your real life. And he went in on these guys, man. And if you look at these guys' responses, man, you can tell they're bothered. But it was just refreshing to me because right now in society, the black culture is driven by feminine energy, a feminine vibration, led by feminine energy, where you got men making excuses. You got men saying they can't do certain things because they're oppressed. You got men just playing the victim. And you got a brother that started from the mud. He came from a uh, humbler, humbler uh, 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 situations, a humbler situation than Jack and Matt Bournes. 
but he still prevailed. He still prevailed. His brother don't have that feminine energy, and, and I respect it. He checked those brothers strongly without getting emotional, without yelling, kept his composure, stated facts. Everything he said could be substantiated, like I said, and I respect it. I respect it. Uh, that brother is one of the reasons I wrote this book, A Toast to the Man. It's to celebrate man, but also to raise the bar, to get us back to where we used to be. You know, uh, masculine men. You know, I don't like using this alpha, beta <clears throat> terminology so much, but just be men. You know, just be masculine. Just be a masculine man. You know, uh, stop making excuses. So, you know, uh, you know, I know, I know people have a problem with me, people that know me. Uh, when I take the stand of, I'm not making excuses. I'm going to go get it. And I suggest you not make excuses. So, you know, I don't have a lot of people uh, on my side when it comes to that. Right? Uh, but I've never played a victim. And it was just, like I said, refreshing to hear this brother, man. It's like he came from up under a rock. I hadn't heard from him or seen him in years. Uh, but I respect it. And uh, we need more brothers like this. We need to protect this brother at all costs. This is a stand-up, solid brother. And uh, yeah, man, this is what we got to get back to. So yeah, check out that video. Uh, subscribe to that brother's page, man, Kwame Brown. Subscribe to my page. Hit that like button. Yes, you hit the like button. And uh, yeah, man, from me to you, love.